Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, February the 28th, 2019. And what a day today. When the market is red, we are always green. Vegas, I'm going to yes. hand it right over to you. Well, it is January 28th, not February. Oh, did I say February? <laughs> Jim's already in February, guys. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let me tell you, there's a lot of snow here in the city so hopefully if those of you are out there shoveling be careful don't injure yourself okay so it was a very busy day and i uh, just want to tell you the stocks we're going to talk about today uh we are going to talk about cron we're going to talk about acb two big canadian pot plays we're going to talk about reefer r-e-f-r t-e-u-m and an otc pick favorite of mine called s-h-m-p and we're going to start off and talk about Cron. Now, those of you that listen to our YouTube and follow and subscribe, you know Jim's so bullish on this stock for weeks. So I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart right away because I don't need to go into repeating myself over and over about Cron. Right okay. over to you, Jim. And talk. then I'm going to talk about the options. Oh, yeah. You want me to talk about the chart first? Yeah, talk the... about the chart first, and then I'll explain how I picked the options here. Well, again, you know, this is one that I called down there at 1015, and I said this is very bullish, and, and I'll post this one-month daily chart. Called it right down here 20 days ago, and look how that thing's run up. And I said this probably get to at least $20. Today we had a beautiful breakout on Cron, and I'm going to post three-month chart daily. We called it down here at first at 650, and then we had a little, you know, drama last year, and it pulled on up, and here we are with a high today. It closed at 1848. I'm going to pull up the daily, and I, and I tell you exactly how to play this every time, every day. I said, get in here, play the pullback on it, first thing, if you can. And Vegas noticed right out of the gate that this really had some momentum today. And we had a little channel here that we followed up, a little wedge that we followed all the way up and then it broke out of that wedge and I was calling in this room every time it touched down hit that wedge line that that was a pretty good little bounce up play to play that and we hit that thing four times and you had four good bounces just off the wedge alone not counting this bottom breakout you could have held it all the way up to eighteen dollars Vegas called eighteen in the room when it was down here first thing this morning right around sixteen thirty five and so once it hit that 1822, it pulled back to that wedge again, to that bottom trend line, and, and bounced up a little bit to my 1809. And, you know, I don't just draw these patterns after hours. I'm doing it as the day goes through. And I'm, I have many people that can witness this. So then we, we got broke out of that wedge, and we hit that 1771 area and bounced up a little bit. Then we had another pullback and went down below that 50 and that 100. And then we started up again. I mean, this thing had volume all day long. We pulled back, and we had that golden cross here over the 100, and it bounced up again, hit that resistance of 1848. Well, we followed that resistance line all the way the rest of the day, creating a little sending triangle right here for the next breakout. See that sending triangle? I'd more or less call this a pennant breakout, and it just kind of tightened up right here, and then after hours, Vegas... 1875 high just after wow. hours this is just flying so flying. the way i look at this trade is you can play the pullbacks don't rush yourself into it and um, you can play the options on it if you can get in and, and predict like today would have been a wonderful day to do that even when i called it back there at 10 bucks you know i wish i had the foresight back then to say option trade run it up to 20 but I'm gonna let Vegas. I'm gonna hand this over to Vegas now. But I, I, if you're gonna, if you're not in the trade, wait for the pullback on it. And once it starts to consolidate, it hits any of these moving averages, this 50, this 100, or the 200, and it bounced off the 200 a couple times today here at the end of the day. And it got a little tight squeeze right here, and then that 50 broke out, created this little breakout to 1875. So in the morning. Play the pullback. If you can get down here to around 18 bucks, that's where I'm going to call support at, right here at the $18 level. Be 18 or 18.25, one of them two. Go ahead, Vegas. 
Okay, so I want to say that, um, you know, thanks to Jim with his, you know, phenomenal chart skills. I mean, you know, talk about someone that knows how to read a chart. This guy's the one. And uh, I have to say, because he's just so bullish on Cron for the longest time, uh, you know, today was the first time when I, you know, I was watching Cron this morning and I said, wow, I noticed when it got to $16.11, I said, look, guys, uh, go long on the stock if that's if you like the setup, but this is going to eighteen dollars today. I said um, that was kind of where I could see it going, and you know what? Bingo, because that did break eighteen and uh, new highs. So at the same time, though, you know, not everyone can handle paying sixteen dollars a stock. It's a lot of money, and it's hard to make a lot of money on a stock like that if you don't actually buy, you know, a, a decent size. I mean, even a, I would say like at least. Uh, you know, even 50 shares or 100 shares would be good um, for a day trade. But in this case, you know, I'm always thinking about the people with smaller accounts. So I looked at the options and I shared an options trade for the $16.50 strike, which expires on February 1st and shared that at 69 cents, which was a $69 investment for one contract. And let me tell you that went all the way to like $2.28 so the people that bought it uh were screaming like they were just so excited that they put in 69 dollars. some people paid 72 dollars because they waited and they wanted to, you know it finally went up a little but uh they were so happy that they made a hundred percent or more on their option call so at the same time we called options on the 17 dollar calls and uh also the 18 dollars, and all those three that we called are all expiring on Friday, but everybody that bought them is in the money. So thanks a lot to Jim on his charts and made give us uh, additional confidence. But you could see also on the charts, on the options uh, flow, the volume, uh, the open interest was extremely high. And uh, obviously, when that happens, it's really exciting because everybody's wanting it and everyone's making money on it. I'm sure lots of people did well with the option calls. So congratulations, and I'm just really happy for the people with small accounts because they really doubled their money and tripled in some cases. So congratulations. All right. Okay. So, uh, Jim, can you talk about uh, the other stock called uh, ACB? Yep. And that's another uh, marijuana one. That's, you know, Aurora Cannabis Stock. And uh, that's another one, Canadian company. And... Um, I just want you to, you know, talk about the chart there and, you know, looked bullish to us, looked, liked it around $6 and 90 cents. I was looking for around at least $7 and very happy to see that uh, it broke seven. And uh, where do you see this going on? ACB. Well, I'm a first one. This has kind of been a slow mover at the very beginning when okay. all them other stocks ran. And I'm going to pull up the yearly daily. And show you, we did have a nice little breakout on this ACB up here to 12.53 about four months ago. The farm bill came out. When that farm bill came out, the thing just started running up. We had a yearly bottom here at four bucks, and then after it hit that high, it kind of pulled back. And you know, the market was in pretty rough shape at the end of the year last year, and we kind of pulled back. And I'm telling the room, you know, I said, "What's well, probably about time when my crystal ball came out to start looking at this one." And by that time, it was back down here at this low support, right around 4, 450, 460. And then here lately, we've noticed some pretty good action on this thing. I'm going to bring up the 20 day. We had a wedge that had breakout on it a couple weeks ago. And then it pulled back and kind of consolidated here at a low support right around. Let me get this tool ready. Had a low support right around here. I'd say right around 615. Well, it touched that 200 SMA, and that 50 started curling up. And today, we had a golden cross on that 50-day that broke out over the 100. And then we had that good breakout today. So it actually ran pretty good from that 1615 level up to 704. And we want to try to break this resistance level up here right around 746. That's where my next target of resistance will be, right around 746. So I'm going to pull up the daily and just show you what kind of run it had today. And like any of these other pot stocks, and I'm going to tell you right now, it seems like they like to pull back right at the first of the day. 
first of the moment. And this sucker took off from that 656 area and run all the way to 693. And then we had this flag right here, kind of con that pennant flag, kind of consolidated, and then we had the other breakout. And then it pulled back to that support level that I had. And I ain't touched any of these trend lines today. These are off my existing trend lines, so I added nothing. So what I'm going to add now is going to be a new resistance level. I'm going to add a couple of them. I'm thinking right around here, right around 709. And then we got a little bit of mumble jumble up around in here. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing probably right around 711. So we're going to try to break the 709 area. And expect this thing to pull back to support. And I'm thinking that support's going to be right around 693. If that don't hold, we'll come back to this previous day resistance level, which I call a low support at 683. This is ACB. Keep it on watch. It's bullish, just like all the other. Uh, and today when the market was down red, this was about the only sector that was really running good today. And then a couple others started following in later in the path. So the wheat sector is still bullish in my my eyes, and I think it's going to be for a couple of years. You're going to see a lot of um, consolidation. You're going to see a lot of merging. You're going to see a lot. And we talked about this a couple of videos back about we're going to see a lot more grow rooms to meet the capacity that they need for this sector to keep running like it is, especially like the CBD oil and so the next one we're going to talk about is REFR. Yeah, so I just want to mention, you know, this company is called Search Frontiers. And uh, this company is into smart glass. And you know what they do? So if you are, obviously, if you have, um, you know, you're in an aircraft, you're on a yacht, you're on a train, maybe your office, maybe your car. Um, this actually lets you control the lighting and shading of the glass um either manually or automatically and you know what's funny i mean i remember when i went to israel not too long ago uh, they used to have it that your window was open and then to make it dark you'd have to pull down that shade and i noticed on my flight all of a sudden the windows were tinted it was dark but the window was technically the shade was not even on the window was open like the shade was open and i was like that's interesting so you know what i guarantee they probably use uh reefer technology so um this is really good it uh good pass it gives you uh people that travel it gives a good passenger experience of viewing things at dawn hours or nighttime and uh this is really interesting so i think it's a good product a smart glass they have a really cool website too if you check it out called smartglass.com i think jim's showing it to you guys right research there research frontiers yes that's right and uh i will say that this chart is beautiful we were in this stock just so you know uh we did share this back then as a swing trade back in the dollar 93 zone and even again at the 220, because the target was around 220, 223, and we broke that. And I still like the chart for a continuation. Although it had a bit of a pullback, the stock to me is still bullish. Um, I had a new 52 week uh, closing high last week. And I think uh, it's doing the same thing again today. So, Jim, I'm going to let you talk about the beautiful chart that I'm seeing. Yep, three year breakout here. So we closed up here at 288 after market and looked like we had a $3 high here. And we hit my resistance of 299. And my next one was at 311. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up the daily. First, I'll pull up the 20 day. Just get a nice little glance at the 20 day here. That was the three month. Let me pull up three year. So yeah, this thing had a three year high of 503. So we we're at about a. Oh, I'd say almost a pivot point in between that 503 and that low. And we had a low support on this thing at 66, 60 wow. cents. I Holy. Mean, that what been, was that, Jim? That was back on uh, 625.18. Oh, okay, so back in June. Yeah. So it had had a low of 60 cents and then bounced up pretty good and pulled back to that, to that, um, to that 100 on the three-year. And then now it's bounced up past the 200. So I'm going to pull up the one year, get another, just look at the moving averages. 
and we have that 200 that 100 and we broke way past that now that the, the 50 is starting to crawl on up and I'm in this new resistance level which I showed you that three-year chart where I got these resistance lines at so we broke past I mean for the last couple of days we've had a real nice breakout this last today was really nice I'm gonna pull up the daily one minute so we had a low here of 29 229 and it ran all the way up to three bucks so that's about a 70 cent bounce and then we pulled back to the and these are the three moving averages I use on a breakout stock because it's more relaxed and anytime it touches it I can more or less get in on a play if I'm scalping you see we touched it a couple times here had a bounce there took this and I could have ran it all the way up until it come back you know start consolidating here and hit that 50 again then we had to right before close we had that three dollar breakout up to three bucks and it pulled back and it hit that 100 and then here we are back at three again so we're here we are looking at a double top on REFR and I, t I like this company a lot this is new innovation and this is really going to be something I could see a lot of neat stuff being built out of this even in you imagine in in uh in in, in the housing department even when they're you know building who knows man it just got a it's triple top i'm in a double top here at three bucks i'm excited about it so if it pulls back any let's see if it hits any of these three moving averages i got a low support right around 268 284 and then if we might just stay above that three and i'll just have to keep drawing new resistance lines off that three-year chart and this is refr sorry about getting tongue-tied there i'm just very excited about this company i'm not trying to influence you into buying it i always say try to buy it on a pullback if you want to get in at support don't try to chase them but vegas is right we did break out on a 52 week high here and the next one we're going to talk about is teum and i'm going to hand it right over to miss vegas okay thank you jim so uh you know teum you guys heard me about one of the themes for 2019 is uh telecommunications and uh you know teum is uh peridium and uh they basically connect people all around the world with their cloud platform guess what for communications okay and uh this company um has uh located in new york and uh they have a cloud-based software platform and uh, they provide, like I said, global mobile connectivity. And I have to say, I am really pleased with this chart. Um, this stock to me uh, came up earlier today. Uh, you know, I, I just for some reason looked at the chart a little closer and I was really impressed with the weekly chart. And I said, you know what, this looks good for a swing trade. And I uh, alerted that. And, you know, a lot of people can't handle day trade. It's too much rushing. Um, or they have a full-time job. So this was great. We shared this idea in the room. And um, quite happy so far with how it is working out. And, Jim, I would like you to talk about that because I thought it was overbought. It also had a pocket pivot um, as well on Friday's chart. And we are swinging this here from around 253 yep well yesterday from 234 so uh keep a watch on it if you're not in it but let jim talk about that one look at this beautiful run past three months from 145 all the way up to 255 here and yesterday was a pretty good little sign with this doji this white doji right here is going to break out that there is a good sign that you're going to get you a little breakout play the next day and by gosh look what happened it had had a resistance there at 233 that I had drawn up it could be a little bit higher but then there was probably a reason why I got that there and I'll pull up the years chart and see why but that breakout point was right around 334 so that's just a penny because you could see it right here where it hit again on this candle right here then pulled back and had that little red doji right here and it bounced on up past three days so I'm gonna pull up the years chart just have a little glance see we've had some pretty good highs ups and downs on this little stock at support level which is right around here right around 233 that's exactly why i put it there because i call that more or less a good solid pivot point area 
It could be a support. If you were up here in this area, it would be a low support. But if you look at the year's chart, I would call that area a pivot point. And today we broke out of that pivot point. And we got a lot more range to go on this stock. I see a couple little resistances. I'm going to add to it right now at 247. I'm looking all the way across the chart. And I've done this for a while, so I get kind of accustomed to finding these things. And we got that 251, so that ain't much. We'll see if we take it a little bit higher here. Right there. That's a good spot. At 261. Then we could bring it up to about 268. And then your next 268. And then we get that in here. Change it to about 270. So I like that. And then I'm going to bring it up one more shot to 280. And then I'll add on more tomorrow. So if I want to play the pullback on it, I'd probably play it back to this 200 SMA. And low support, maybe right around the 224 area. But I, I you know, I know lower than that. And you got that 233, which is a good solid little spot right here, too, for a support. So let me pull up the 20 day and look at it one more time. Yeah, I'm looking at a support level right around 233. And maybe this 241 area so second support right around 234 233 and if that don't hold this 228 area for a bounce up but this looks pretty good it's, i mean we're breaking on up this has been a real strong like she said weekly chart you can tell by looking at the at the three month how that just you know that's just beautiful and then we had a little consolidated period right in here then we had that other breakout so a lot of times when you see a big breakout like this, and it did pull back to that 248 after the 255, you might see a little pullback. And I gave you those, that range a little bit ago, no lower than around 228 to 233. And this is TEUM. And these stocks that we've mentioned all day today are momentum plays. So you do expect to pull back and for them to bounce back up. And then this one here, Vegas, really, really hit it on the button, hit it on the button. And this is <laughs> this has got to do with food. <laughs> yeah, this is our little favorite little. I mean, you guys know. I mean, I really like taking a nice liking to OTC stocks, and thankful to uh, you know to Patrick and you know Jim used to trade OTC a lot. Yep. And uh, you know, some people sometimes are a little bit uh, turned off or sketchy about OTC. They think, oh, everything there is no good. That is not true. Nope. Sometimes companies have to start somewhere and they start on the OTC land and then they apply for an uplisting. So they have to start somewhere sometimes and OTC sometimes is the platform. So that doesn't mean it's a, that it's a bad company. You're bad. You're going to OTC. That's not how it works. So <laughs> we have to stop thinking like that. Um, so anyhow, SHMP. I have to say, I am really liking this company. So... Okay. You know, it's funny. I mean, we had the stock, believe it or not, back in December. Uh, we had this back around 0 0.015. Can you believe this? Um, very, very cheap. And um, now the stock's at 0 0.07. And this actual company here, SHMP, uh, you know, and I don't know what's triggering the action because it has had action last week and even today. But, I mean, the news on this a couple weeks ago, you know, this company, SHMP, they're into aqua technology. So technology that you that's with water. And they're in Dallas, Texas, and near uh, San Antonio. And they actually provide uh, a system, a commercial system, where people, were, you know, fish farmers really can grow shrimp in an enclosed saltwater system using technology that they've patented that can produce fresh, never frozen, grown shrimp without using any chemicals or antibiotics. And they're looking to obviously use this patent. It's basically being distributed worldwide, not just for shrimps though, also for lobster, for clams, for oysters, for salmon. So they did announce a couple weeks ago that they finally entered the next phase of development with their U.S. patent technology. 
by extending the capability to additional saltwater species. So initially it was just for shrimp, but now they're going to be able to market this for all kinds of fish. So that is what the news was a couple weeks ago. So I think this is really interesting company. And uh, what a run we had on this one today. We were at uh, 0.53 and what a on chat all day and I kept saying Jim what's the next support what's the next resistance and uh, you know he would guide me and uh, you know with his guidance you know we're able to hold longer and uh, people with smaller accounts were thrilled because they're able to buy these OTC option uh, opportunities and uh, did very well today so congratulations to all the shrimp traders and I actually kept some overnight so we'll see what happens tomorrow if there'll be a continuation but my god this price back in december was a bargain so it's unfortunate don't have it from but that's a just got to move on to a new trade and so jim what are your thoughts well first thing i seen when i was looking at the website miss vegas is that shrimp is by far the single most consumed seafood in the world well, definitely love it. That, that could be as long a, as it's uh, That could be a huge <laughs> catalyst right there alone. And and I'm going to pull up the year's chart on. I'm going to show you how I drew some of these resistance lines. And we had a we had a, a high up here for the year around thirteen, around thirteen eight, with a good solid resistance right around probably thirteen cents. So we still got a lot more room for this to travel up. We got a lot more room for this to travel up and i was drawing these blue trend lines off the previous you know every chart tells a story and we never want to erase history because history can bring us today and sometimes history repeats itself and it, there's a lot of things about trading stocks that's true about life from gravity to uh to history to mathematics i mean just there's just all kinds of stuff here so I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart. And I'm going to look at it. We've had the breakout here down here from 127 all the way up today. The resistance high was a double top here at, even after hours. It did kind of pull back a little bit. 0769. You're going to expect that. You're going to expect that on penny stocks. They're going to, you know, they, they, they have a tendency of going up and down, but it's still yet. It held support there at that seven cent level, and Vegas just made a beautiful call on this. And there was people in the room that that are uh, not very experienced traders that took this trade, and there one of them said she had the best day of her life in the room today. Yeah, she said and, it was her best trade for like so far for 2019, her best trading ever. Yeah, and to, uh, this is amazing. I love it. This is like life changing. Yeah, and, and when the market's red, we're always green, or we try to be. And when we say that, we use, we try to tell people to use patience and let us find the trades that are worthy for the day. And a lot of these that we mentioned today are just old trades that we've traded for a while that are highly, highly have highly, you know, have great momentum to them, great volume, and just beautiful scalper plays like Cron, I mean, ACB. T E U M, and then the shrimp. Look how long it's been running. I mean, it, it's ran pretty good here. So, I'm going to tell you where I think the pullback is going to be on this, if any at all, because I still think we have a lot of room to run. And I'm just kind of looking at the previous highs that we had yesterday, and we had that double top here. And I don't think it's going to get down to this area, 473. I don't think we're going to see that. But we might see. It run into the 50 SMA, and we're going to pull that up on a, on a daily one minute just to see where that is real fast. So these are the three moving averages I'm going to be using tomorrow. That's going to be the 50, the 100, and the 200. And I'm going to see if they want to bounce off this 50 or if they're going to bounce off this 100 right here. And this is on a daily one minute chart. Jot that down because a lot of people won't tell you that in these videos in a way. So we had a double top here after hours, right around seven six nine, seven seven six seven, 
Let's see if we can get this to break out more, get it up there at about 10 cents into that 13 here later on down the line. And with that new technology, this could really bring this stock a lot higher than that. And I'm going to tell you that right now. That's, this is running off news. It's two weeks old. So keep that in mind also. And it's and it, this is just great technology. And, and thank you, Vegas, for alerting us to the room and telling everybody about it and keeping them motivated about it because you ain't been wrong. Not on this no, one. No, so far. Not so on far, any we're of liking. Them. Yep. No, we've been really happy with this one and Sone, another OTC. So very happy. Everybody's happy. And you know what? I want to make 2019 a green one for everybody. So if you are listening, following, subscribing, come visit our chat. If you don't have time, then watch these videos. We give a lot of good swing ideas. And I'm going to follow up on the ones we uh, talked about yesterday. I'll be monitoring them all week. And uh, to see the progress on them. Also, uh, just one comment. Um, the U.S. Justice Department did mention they have um, 13 count indictment against China's Huawei Technologies company against uh, two subsidiaries and its CFO, Meng Guanzhou. So uh, that does not look good for potential impact to China stocks. So we'll keep those on watch tomorrow for a pullback. Yep. And uh, I just want to say, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and, and make sure that you ring that bell to get our future updates. And uh, we're going to do one of these uh, YouTube videos live during the market hours. So keep up with that. It's not going to be, I mean, we're going to do it live and then we'll record it and pass it on to YouTube. But uh, we just want to let you know about that so you can see us what we're looking at during the trading hours in the day. And this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Uh, today's date is January the 22nd, 2019. And 22nd? No, Jim. We're 28th. <laughs> I can't get it right if I... First he gets the month wrong, now he gets the day wrong. And what's, Jim, what year are sleep, we in? Guys. What year are... You need to get some sleep. 2019. 2009. 19. <laughs> He's just joking, guys. Okay. okay, everyone. We have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow. And I'll... that's all for my love stocks. Have a good night.